Hello everyone, welcome to the Codeverse. In this video, we will learn about what is an array and why we need it. So let's understand why we need array with the help of example. Consider a program where we want to take 5 integer number as an input from user. So for saving this number, we need to create 5 integer variables. In future, instead of 5 numbers, if we want to take 10 numbers as an input, so we will create 10 integer variables. So as number increases, our line of code will also increase. Now consider an example where we want to ask user how many numbers he want to enter and once user enter all the element then we need to print these numbers. Here we don't know how many variables we need to create because user can enter any number. So we cannot create the variables at a runtime. Here array comes into the picture. Array is a collection of same type of elements. Now let's see how we can solve our problems with the help of array. So if we want to save 5 numbers then we will create array of size 5 and save these integers in this array. Consider a name of our array as num. Index of an array starts from 0. Means if you want to access the element at the first position, then you will use num of 0. This will return the first element in an array. If you want to access second element, then we will use num of 1 and so on. Similarly, if you want to save something in an array, you can use indexes. Like for saving something at the 0th position, you can use num of 0 equal to any number that you want. Similarly, you can save the values at other indexes also. So index of an array starts from 0 and this is the reason why everyone says that if you are a programmer, then your counting starts from 0, not from 1. You can define the size of array while creating it. Like if you want to save 10 numbers, then we will define the size of array as 10. Similarly, for saving 100 elements, we will define the size as 100. We can also take this size from user. Now let's see the syntax of array. First comes type of array. If you want to save integer number, then type will be int. If you want to save strings, then type will be string. Same thing for float and double. After time comes the name of array. In our case, it's a num. And then open and close square bracket. Then equal to sign and then new keyword to initialize the memory for this array. After it, type of the array and size of array in the square bracket. You can see the syntax on your screen. Now let's understand array in the details with the help of example. Consider we want to write a program where we will take 5 numbers as an input from a user and then we will save this 5 number in an array. After saving, we will print this 5 numbers on the screen. It is a simple program but you will understand the concept of array with this example. Now let's write the class and main function. If you want to understand what is public static void main, then you can check out my short video for it. Now let's define the integer array with the size 5. We are defining an integer array because we want to store a number. If we want to save string, then we will define an array of a string. We have learned that if we want to save numbers in an array, then we can save them with the help of indexes. Like for saving element at the 0 position, we will use num of 0. For saving at the first position, we will use num of 1 and so on. Similarly, if you want to access the number at the 0 position, then you can use num of 0. For accessing the element at the first position, you can use num of 1 and so on. You can print this element, you can add this element and whatever operations you want to perform, you can perform on this element. Now, instead of taking static input, we will take input from user using scanner class. We will use sc.nextit to take integer as an input from a user. We will replace all the static numbers to the user inputs. Now you can see that as number increases then our line of code will also increase. Like for saving 10 numbers we have to write 10 lines. So to reduce the line of code we can use a loop. We will write a loop from 0 to n where n is the size of array. So to make the size of array more flexible we will take the size of array from user and save it into the variable called n. While initializing array instead of putting the static variable we will use this n variable. Now user can define how many numbers he want to enter and user can define the size of array. Now let's write the loop from 0 to n. Inside this loop we will take the input from user. We will use i as an index for the array. So first statement in the loop we will ask user to enter the ith element and after it we will store this element at the i position in an array using num of i is equal to sc.nextint. So when loop starts the initial value of i will be 0. So user will enter the first element and it will save at the 0th location. For second iteration, i value will become 1. Then user will again enter the value and this value will be saved at the first location. And same things goes till the n number. Once loop is ended, we will have all the elements stored in an array. You can access the elements using the indexes like num of 0, num of 1 or you can write a loop for it. Now let's write a loop for printing the elements. Again we will write a loop from 0 to n. First statement will print the value of index i and second statement will print the value stored at that location. We will get the value using num of i. We will put this num of i statement inside our system.out.println statement. So for the first iteration, 
i will equal to 0 and then we will print the value at the 0th location for the next iteration i's value will change to 1 then we will print the value at the first location and so on i hope you would have understand the concept of array if you have any questions you can ask it in the comment section that's it for today's video if you like this video then please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching